All right, Michael, before we get into this, can you name the Spice Girls? No. <laughs> I can only name one. I actually know very little about them. I know they did a wannabe. If you want to be my lover. It's it's happy, dopey, grumpy, sleepy, sneezy, bashful, and dark. That's the Spice Girls. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. I, I hold on. I can I can do this. It's, it's okay. You, you want to try before me? Okay. Yes. Baby spice, ginger yes. spice, posh yes. spice, yes. scary spice. Mm-hmm. Yes. Scary. And vanilla spice. And Paul. <laughs> is there really a vanilla spice? That's pretty good. No. Great. No. Uh-huh. I don't know who the last one is. There's a sporty spice, I believe. Sporty I believe she's spice. like. Okay, I'd buy that. Gary's my favorite. All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. Ice is back with a brand new episode of Hollow Victories, where anything less than the best is exactly what we were expecting. I am Matt Presents, joined, as always, by my totally tubular co-host. I'm MJ Shadakul, and I'm cool as ice. And today we got the the face-off of... Two pop acts that were only ever popular in the 90s, cashing in on their 15 minutes of fame. It's Cool as Ice versus Spice World. Um, and I, I guess we'll hop right into Cool as Ice. So Cool as Ice is a Vanilla Ice vehicle. The, the famous rapper Vanilla Ice, known for his song Ice Ice Baby, and pretty much nothing else. People like to call him a one-hit wonder, but in fact, he had several hits back in the day. So so don't try to cover up your shame, 90s. You gave Vanilla Ice several hits. Never forget that. Uh, in the movie, he plays Johnny, who is basically just him. Uh, and he, he's driving around with his posse on some motorcycles, but his friend's motorcycle breaks down. And they gotta stay in town for a few days while the mechanic repairs it. And in that time, he meets a girl named Kathy and starts a kind of romantic relationship with her, even though she's already got a boyfriend, but he's stuffy and uptight and doesn't respect her. And uh, Vanilla Ice doesn't actually respect her either, but, you know, he's, he's cool at least. At the very least, he's cool. Meanwhile, in a uh, subplot... Um, Kathy's father has been seen on television, and as it turns out, he and Kathy's mother are in the witness protection program because they testified against some people in the mob, and those mob people are going after Kathy's parents now, and uh, Johnny has to step in and help with that situation after they kidnap uh, Kathy's little brother. So what'd you think, Michael? I think that Cool as Ice falls under so bad it's good. (laughs) Like, it, it is absolutely atrocious, but it was funny. Um, I was laughing a lot watching that one. I could even, like, I could even see it being, like, a, like, oh, watch a movie of family. We're going to watch something that we can make fun of. It's such a good pick because it's, like, its main goal is to make Vanilla Ice look cool. And it fails so hard to do its one purpose. And as a result, you just get a really funny movie, like, the entire time. There's not a lot of things I can say that... I think are objectively good about it or unironically good about it. Um, I guess sometimes the cinematography actually looks all right, but other times it's like really bad. (laughs) Like there's times where they're trying to sync up certain shots of like record scratches. So they do really weird things with the camera and that it's supposed to be cool. And it's just reminding me of tank girl. Like again, where it's just, really fucking obnoxious if it's with its presentation. It, it is that kind of wild 90s cinematography. Yeah, but they did have some tracking shots of the motorcycle that looked nice. They 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 had like occasionally there would be some like genuinely good shots. It's just you know kind of wasted on a movie like this, but nothing like amazing, you know, nothing that's like whoa, I I'm thinking about this specific shot after watching the movie. Just um, while I was watching, I was like, yeah, you know what? This this could be worse. But in terms of like 
characters and story and music and everything. It's just, yeah, it's n- nothing, nothing, nothing really um, unironically good about it, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, for for a movie that is trying to make Vanilla Ice look cool, they make him look like such a fucking douchebag. Like, yeah. fuck this guy so hard. <laughs> he is, like, like he rolls up and is just, like, immediately, immediately overstepping his boundaries with this girl. Like, it is disgusting, <laughs> honestly. The first thing he does is almost kills her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, she, get, she gets thrown off a horse, which is yeah. dangerous. Yeah, maybe saying almost kills her is a little dramatic, but it could kill her. Um, yeah, and, and then he's, he's like, getting way too close to her when he shouldn't, and insisting on calling her cat when her name is Kathy, and stealing from her. Mm-hmm. Just a terrible guy all around. Yeah. I think with with him, it's like the whole... The whole spiel that they do is he isn't likable at all, but they make the boy that she is dating like an even bigger douchebag. Like he's like physically abusive. He, uh, I mean, I, uh, maybe not. I don't know if he actually does anything physical, but he is abusive. He's an abusive boyfriend and he has like no personality. So it's like, okay, you can maybe I hate this guy more, but I don't, I don't actually hate him more just because you're insinuating that I should hate him, which I do. But you're not doing that with Vanilla Ice. You want me to like Vanilla Ice. Is his name Vanilla Ice in this movie, or does he have no name? No, his name is Johnny. Johnny, okay. Uh, but he's Probably just, just said that. He's, he's just Vanilla Ice. I don't know yeah. why they even bothered giving him a different name. Well, they literally called it Cool as Ice. Like, yeah. Why bother? Yeah. And it's not even like Johnny is Vanilla Ice's real name. Uh... Fuck, I looked up what his real name was the other day, and I, I've already forgotten. Robert Matthew Van Winkle. So, yeah, I don't know where Johnny came from. I think the villains in this movie are uninteresting. I think that Vanilla Ice is a douchebag. The girl, I don't, I can't like her because I don't understand what the fuck she sees in this person. Her entire personality is that she likes him. And then when her dad reveals all this information about their life, she's saying, no, you don't know him like I do, even though she's known him for two days, which I think is, like, blatantly irresponsible. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I did kind of neglect to mention there is some, like, mis- sitcom misunderstanding where they think Vanilla Ice is in with, like, these mob guys. So that's a, that's a big plot point. Yeah. The mob guys could be funny. Um... They could have been, like, they, they, it could have been something that worked, but I just don't think they gave them anything funny to say. Um, like, oh, none of the genuine attempts at humor work for me in this movie. It's, like, because they do try to be funny sometimes. It's always when they're trying to be cool that I'm laughing. Um, <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. And it is pretty fucking funny sometimes. He drops, like, a fucking ice cube in her mouth when they're laying in bed together because he's vanilla ice and it's cool as ice. <laughs> A uh, a fun fact I learned while we were watching this is that uh, this movie came to be after uh, Ice Cube was cast in the film uh, Boys <laughs> in the Hood, and Vanilla Ice's label is like, oh shit, we gotta like cash in on this, we gotta get Vanilla Ice in a movie, and so just for for context, I watched Boys in the Hood earlier today and. Uh, probably goes without saying, but Cool as Ice isn't even in the same fucking universe as Boys in the Hood. <laughs> Boys <laughs> Boys in the Hood is this, like, dark, thoughtful, well-acted, incredibly personal story about, like, the struggles of living in South Central L.A. Not one word of that is true about Cool as Ice. Yeah. So you would actually recommend that one? It was a good movie? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed Boys in the Hood. It was, it was a good movie. Um, it is pretty rough, though. <laughs> um, you, you you told me recently, you you told us all about this in our group chat that you know you watched three thousand movies and you made Lawrence of Arabia your three thousandth movie Indeed. that you watched. Um, 
How many did you see between that and this? Is Cool as Ice your 3001? I had already seen Cool as Ice. Oh, okay. Um, Damn. Two, two points I want to make about Boys in the Hood. First off, Boys in the Hood is not an Ice Cube vehicle. I, I think a closer comparison to Cool as Ice would be something like uh, 8 Mile, the Eminem vehicle. Because, like, in that, Eminem is basically playing himself, and he does a lot of rapping mm-hmm. in the movie, so... That is pretty similar. That's a good movie, right? That's, yeah, People yeah. like that one, right? Yeah, I, I like Cool as Ice. I, I like 8 Mile. <laughs> Excuse me. I do like Cool as Ice, too, but for completely different reasons. Yeah, I I haven't seen it, but I've heard good things about 8 Mile. I think I saw I, I saw a scene in 8 Mile where they're just kind of freestyling. Yeah. And I remember thinking, like, yeah, this is, like, a pretty... In- I was engaged, but I just didn't watch the whole thing. Yeah, but, like, in Boys in the Hood, like, uh, Ice Cube is playing a character... He's not even the main character, he's a side character, and he he doesn't do any rapping in the movie. It is not a movie that is designed to be uh, an Ice Cube vehicle the way this is a vanilla ice vehicle. Mm-hmm. Which kind of leads me to my second point, which is that after Boys in the Hood, Ice Cube became an actor, right? Like, he's he was in, like, Anaconda and the Friday movies... And then more recently, he's in stuff like 21 and 22 Jump Street. There are people, I'm sure, who know Ice Cube more as an actor than as a rapper. Which is mm-hmm. absolutely not true about Vanilla Ice. He probably it's, did that movie and saw that he, like, one, he could do it, and two, he enjoyed doing it. And it kind of pushed him in that direction. Vanilla Ice, I don't, I don't know if I'd say this movie ruined him, because I don't know what ruined him. I think people just got kind of bored really fast. Um, cause I always knew Vanilla Ice as nothing but a joke <laughs> cause I wasn't really, you know, I have no memory of the time that he was cool. <laughs> I, I might have not even been around when he was cool. When did Cool as Ice come out? Uh, was that 1990? When was that again? Cool as Ice came out in 91, I think so maybe 92, he, but yeah, Vanilla he was probably not famous anymore by the time I was like even born. Yeah. Uh, Vanilla Ice peak career was like early nineties. Yeah, because, like, rap music was getting popular, but it's all, like, really filthy gangster rap about, like, living in the hood. And then, you know, Vanilla Ice comes along with this, like, clean, safe, white guy rap. And so that's kind of why he was popular, is because people were afraid of real rap music. And Vanilla Ice was, like, the safe alternative but pretty quickly people caught on that he was, like, super lame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to give him some credit, uh, <laughs> and That's My Boy, and don't watch that movie. This isn't a recommendation. But in That's My Boy, he's in it, and, like, one-fourth of the jokes of that movie is just making fun of Vanilla Ice and his career. There's a line where he says every time they play, like, Ice Ice Baby, he loses money because of the royalties. Um, uh, you know what? I believe that that's true. <laughs> like, if, if someone it could, it could told be. me that, I, I believe it. Um, um, but I will say, one, the Vanilla Ice jokes in that movie are like some of the only jokes in that movie that I like. Because <laughs> uh, it is kind of funny. Um, and two, I like to give him props, I do think that it at least shows he has a good sense of humor about it now. At least... Uh, it seems that way. Yeah. That's definitely more self-awareness than he does have in this movie. Because in this movie, he looks like a fucking idiot. I know it's harsh, but he just looks... <laughs> the fact that he thought that he looked cool in this is embarrassing. Yeah. Um, he has appeared in other things. Uh, he's, he's in a, a few Adam Sandler movies. That's my boy, Sandy Wexler. I, I, the only one I've seen him in is The Ridiculous Six, where he plays Mark Twain. And that was about when I stopped watching that movie. <laughs> Vanilla <laughs> Ice shows up as Mark Twain, and I'm like, yep, I'm done. <laughs> That's My Boy was kind of the turning point for me, where I realized I didn't like Adam Sandler movies. Because <laughs> I was like, I had a really shit taste in movies for a really long time. Um... For like a really long time. Uh, and actually, yeah, Grown Ups 2, I'd say. Grown Ups 2 is the final straw. But I think I saw That's My Boy before that. I don't remember what the order of which these movies came out was. 
But I watched That's My Boy, and it was the first time like I turned one of the movies off. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Grown Ups Two is. It's probably the worst Sandler movie I've seen. I'm going. Why am I? I'm talking about fucking. I'm sorry. I get derailed too easily. Let's let's move on. <laughs> uh, he he, of course, also stars in the imminent classic, The Hip Hop Witch, which is a movie I so desperately want to review, but it's so incomprehensible. I am worried I cannot do it justice. Like, there is no way to talk about this film and capture how baffling it is to watch. Do you want to do a Hall of Victories on it someday? I don't... What What even could we pair this up with? It's... I don't know. I Maybe I'll try reviewing it eventually, but... <laughs> I, I'll admit, Vanilla Ice is the best part of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, He gets a really funny reveal near the end of the movie. But no spoilers. Okay. <laughs> um, that movie is worse than Cool as Ice. <laughs> we could talk about some of the a- other actors in this who are not Vanilla Ice. Yeah, well, I, I was going to mention five, not really by name, just the characters. The three friends he hangs out with and the old couple that are repairing the motorcycle are the easiest to stomach characters. It's not that they're bad, but they didn't annoy me once in the movie. And I, I think I maybe got a chuckle out of them once or twice they they were they were fine you know that's the best way i can put it they were fine not good not awful um but everyone else i just thought was insufferable yeah but it was kind of that's kind of part of the fun that's part of the humor of the movie um there's a lot of like like prolific character actors in this movie uh the the old man the mechanic who's repairing the bike is sydney lassick and he's one of those guys who just has, like, minor roles in fucking everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, like, guarantee you've seen something he's in. He's in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. He's in Carrie. Oh, he's in Freeway. He's in Man on the Moon. He's in Deep Cover. He's just one of those oh. guys. Sh- I fucking recognize him now that you mentioned One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I could tell you which character he played. Yeah, he's just in everything. <laughs> He's one of those guys, you see him and you're like, oh, I've seen him before. What's he in? Yeah. I needed to be reminded, but yeah, no, there there he is. Uh, They also got Jack McGee, who's in a lot of stuff. Actually, he was in Marmaduke, but a very minor role. His role was Dalmatian, so I don't even know which character that is. Yeah, so to be clear, we we did talk about this. There are three actors who have appeared in a Hollow Victories movie twice now, but we're still going to say Naomi Watts is in the lead because she played two main characters. Yeah. But, What's the other one? What's it's up it's uh, it's something Howard. It's Ron Clint, Howard's brother, but Clint Howard. Clint Howard. Um Clint Howard was in as like a like two side characters basically. Yes. Uh, Jack McGee, of course, he, he's been in It's Always Sunny, he was in Crash, he was in Basic Instinct, he was in Drive Angry. I watched the, uh, I watched the live-action Grinch with, uh, family the other night, and he's in that. Uh, Clint Howard? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, Clint Howard. He's kind of a goofy, not, not to be mean, he's kind of a goofy-looking person, he actually kind of works as a who pretty well. Well, every, I think he's, like, the one that, only one that doesn't look super uncanny. Because he's just, I don't know, I, 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 that, that's like such a backhanded compliment, but honestly, he works he worked in that role pretty well. And then you've got Michael Gross as the father, known for his role on Family Ties. Also, Burt Gummer from Tremors, which is an amazing movie, and Burt Gummer is one of the greatest characters in it. Like, Burt Gummer makes Tremors. Um, <laughs> kind of disappointing to see him in this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that happens. Sometimes you have a really good actor, and then you're trying to, like, see if they did anything good outside of that, and it's hard to find it. I kind of feel that way about Miles Teller right now, because he did Whiplash, but then he also did Fan Four Stick. Yeah, I've definitely seen him in some other stuff I liked, I think. I don't know, we'll talk about that later. Let's not get derailed again. (laughs) Kathy, played by... Kristen Minter, 
Um, she was one of the siblings in Home Alone, but not a particularly noteworthy actress. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, we should probably mention the director, David Kellogg, who has managed to yeah. make one other movie, the live-action Inspector Gadget movie. Yeah! <laughs> that's, uh, that's his, like, I mean, he's also done, like, a shitload of commercials. Like, mm-hmm. he, he's very much a commercial director. Um, he lo- you can kind of get that from this movie, because... <laughs> Really, this movie is trying to sell you a product. Um, and it's doing whack, wacky stuff with the camera that you would see in, like, a 90s commercial. I mean, um, even the concept of the mo- a lot of the movie seems like a 90s commercial. Because, like, you yeah. have that scene in, like, the dance hall with, like, that crappy rock band. And then Vanilla Ice comes in and he's just like, Psh, these guys just don't get it. It's time to be <laughs> cool. I was, yeah. <laughs> and that his attempt at doing like a romantic scene at the work, uh, at the construction site is probably the hardest I laughed in the entire movie. <laughs> oh God. Of, of all the, of all the songs in the movie, that song is the worst. <laughs> Although it is also the scene where the cinematography is at its best. It is a well shot scene. It's just like. I think the guy tried. Like I said, the shots in this movie aren't necessarily bad. Some of them are, but most of them aren't necessarily bad. It's just like I don't know. It's 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 never some it's never something you can take seriously. Like I said, you're probably right. That probably is the best cinematography in the movie, but it's also the funniest. But that's mainly just because of Vanilla Ice. You're trying to see a romantic scene between them now, and he's doing fucking ridiculous shit, and they're like. Riding on the motorcycle, but no one's actually operating it. Because they're making out. So, uh, I'm like, let's see who did cinematography for this. His name is, uh, Janusz Kaminski. You know what else he was the cinematographer for? What? Schindler's List. What? (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yep. Yeah, it looks like he's done a lot of stuff with... He's done a lot of stuff with, uh, uh... That's funny. Spielberg. Do you think that this was, like, he just did this because he thought it was funny? Well, this seems like something he did before he was in with, uh, Spielberg. Yeah, this is, like, one of the first movies he worked on. And then after this, he does Schindler's List, he does Saving Private Ryan, Artificial Intelligence, Catch Me If You Can... War of the Worlds, uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so... From the cinematographer of Schindler's List, Cool as Ice. <laughs> they should put that... Oh, wait, they could. If, if this movie came out after, they should have said... They should have put that in the trailer. <laughs> from the director of Schindler's... The cinematographer of Schindler's List. We We could talk about... The releases of this movie because I think now it is available on Blu-ray but back when I got it because I do have a copy of it I got it on DVD from the Universal Vault series it was $20 which at the time made it the most expensive DVD in my collection this DVD has the movie and nothing else not even a (laughs) menu It just, it plays the movie automatically, and when it gets to the end of the movie, it starts the movie over again. There is nothing on this DVD but the movie. (laughs) That's why it's a special edition, Matt, because it knows that really deep down, you don't want to go for that awful menu again. You just want to watch Cool as Ice on Loop for all eternity. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't believe I have to waste time pressing play again i just want it to start over what if it, it does go back to what if it does go to a menu after you watch it a second time and they were just like yeah if someone watches this they're gonna want to do an encore <laughs> but you never made it to that menu matt you never had it you never gave it a chance well this is my third time watching it so <laughs> although in my defense one That's of those ins- times one of those times i was watching the riff tracks version that is insane, though, to me, because it's like, 
I've complained about DVDs I've gotten before where I just feel like the menu is shit quality. And I know that's a silly, that's kind of a silly thing to complain about, but if it's like, okay, you're, you're supposed to be professionals and I can make a better DVD menu than this, that's a problem. Um, but yeah, just not even including that at all. It's like, why did you make a DVD just up? Just keep it to streaming services. Then there's not really, a, I don't feel I don't know. You don't have to have like a shitload of bonus features, but if you're not even going to do the bare minimum, I don't even know why you're making a DVD. It's like, it's a physical copy, I guess, but it's a physical copy of like no extra value at all. (laughs) I don't know. I guess people like having the DVD covers for like their shelves and whatnot, but it seems, that does seem really silly to me. Mm -hmm. It's at least possible to find unlike another movie where it's like, you can rent it from like four different websites. It's on Amazon Prime Video. Probably for it says for free, but that probably means with IMDb uh, ads. Yeah, it's free on Tubi. So yeah, it is on Tubi too. It's it's, it's free with ads if you want to watch it. Um, unlike a certain other movie. Yeah, <laughs> I um, I do really, I do really, rec- I I gotta recommend it if you like bad movies and you haven't seen it yet. Um. Watch it with people. Don't watch it alone. I was laughing pretty hard. I was laughing pretty hard watching it. I had a good time. I and like. I, I I gotta admit, Vanilla Ice dresses in this movie. I like his style. <laughs> uh, teach their own. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it it is extremely nineties. Mm-hmm. Like if if there is any yeah. way you could describe this movie. It's 90s. This is, like, raw, unfiltered 90s. I I had a few no- notes I haven't, like, talked about, but m- most of them I got through. I will, one one that I didn't mention yet is that for a Vanilla Ice mu- movie, there really isn't that much music in it. Yeah. I don't feel, at least, like... There's probably two or three scenes where you actually, like, he's actually singing or rapping within the scene. Well, yeah, it starts with him rapping, and then it ends with him rapping, and then in the middle there's, like, one scene where he takes over, like, a school dance. Yeah. Or, no, like a dance hall. Yeah. Um, and, and it's about- weird, and there's, like, songs throughout the movie where it's, like, I, I'm sure it's one of his songs, but they're just playing it over the scene. Yeah, that's um, even that's rare. There's only like one or two of those, and it's like, boy, you did not put a lot of Vanilla Ice music in the Vanilla Ice movie. I have. I'll, I'll, I'm going to use this as an example against both both of these movies because a music biopic movie that I like. Well, granted, I'm honestly neither of these are biopics, but like a musician movie that I like is, which honestly there are not many of, is Rocket Man. Um, it's not like it's not a, it's not like the best thing ever, but it's a pretty entertaining movie. And that one's just like throwing them in nonstop. They don't even play like entire songs at times. Sometimes they'll do like like a minute and thirty seconds of one and be like, okay, now we're transitioning in this song, and they do a good transition. And it's like, yeah, they're just trying to like they want to at least get twenty of his songs in there because it's like, yeah, it's a musician movie. They want to you know show off his music. They even threw in a new song during the credits of that movie. And this one, I don't, like, I don't know if you're going to make a movie about a musician, um, especially with, because, like, Rocket Man felt more like a fashion project. This feels like directly an advertisement. Throw in more shit. <laughs> yeah. Give, 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 your, give your fans a little more. You know what song is not in this movie? Ice Ice, Ice, Ice Baby. Baby. <laughs> His most popular fucking song. You're not going to put that in the Vanilla Ice movie? Maybe there's problems with Queen. Maybe like they had. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't this, know what's the deal with that been, is. This might have been during like a contentious period for that song. I'll buy that. Um, if if that isn't the case, if they could have done it, then yeah, bad call. That should have been like, that should have been in there. Yeah. Spice Girls. You know, they waited till the end, but they did at least throw in "If You Want to Be My Lover" because I feel like that is probably their most famous song. I don't actually know that much about Spice Girls. I could be wrong, but as someone who doesn't know much about Spice Girls, it's the Spice Girls song I know. <laughs> yeah, I I might be able to name more Vanilla Ice songs than Spice Girls songs. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not well versed with either of them, so there there's my bias of the episode. I don't really know these 
musicians. I don't think it would make me like the movies more or less, honestly. Mm. Well, speaking of the Spice Girls, do you think we should transition here? Or do you have anything else to say about it? Cool as Ice? Not really. I think we could transition. Alright. Cool as Ice. It's funny, but it's pretty bad. Vanilla yeah. Ice is a fucking douche. Yeah, bad movie, but, you know, it's not boring. Kind of exactly what you're promised. I, I I have, like, a list rank in the movies completely based off personal enjoyment, not based on which one's actually better or not. And I do have Cool as Ice higher than Barbed Wire because I had more fun watching it. Barbed Wire is easily a better made movie than this, but um, but I just, I laughed at this one more, so it gets, it gets the points. Uh, not how I rank movies on the show. I try to be a little bit more objective on the show. <laughs> anyway, uh, Spice. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to let you introduce it. I'm really glad you're introducing this one and not me. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I, 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 I don't know how I would describe this movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll do my best. Tell me how I do. Um, Spice World, the movie, which I'm already a little confused about the name because is the band is they're called Spite the Spice Girls, not Spice World. So why is it called Spice World, the movie? I don't know. Um, it's about the Spice Girls and their manager and a group of people trying to shut them down and ruin them with a shady photographer and someone trying to adapt a movie. Oh, and at the end, you learn that the movie that they're trying to make about the Spice Girls is the movie you're watching right now. That idea hasn't been done to death. I don't know how often it was, but it's been done in the 90s, but I think it's been done before this one. And not in a clever way, like something like adaptation, just blatant. Um, but it's basically the best way you could some Spice World the movie because it is all over the fucking place. That's why I think, I'm assuming that's why Matt would have a hard time explaining it. The best way I could sum it up is it is a sketch comedy movie featuring the Spice Girls because there are scenes in this movie that contribute to nothing, but it's kind of just like, oh, you were supposed to find that funny. There's a scene where aliens land and they're just gushing over the Spice Girls. Yeah. There's... That's... That's one of the few scenes I remembered from this film. Yeah, there's a scene where they're like dancing with like a like a military s- sergeant or whatever he is. I don't even know what that was supposed to, what what that was all about. <laughs> but then they go for like a uh, obstacle, um, and it's but then one of them, the fashion loving one, she's not going to go for the obstacle. She just walks around it, stuff like that, you know. Um, I think something, uh, yeah, that's the best way I could describe this movie is like there, because there isn't much of a story. At the end, it's like there's a concert that they may or not may or may not make it to on time, but that's not really a question or dilemma throughout the movie. That's more so a dilemma within the last act of the movie. So it's like they told the story in the final act, and the photographers st- trying to get dirt on them as a story in the first two acts, just occasionally, though. It's not really brought up that often. It's just occasionally he steps in. <laughs> and then he eventually gets the story that ruins them, but clearly it didn't ruin them because a ton of people still showed up to the concert. They're their own worst enemy enemies. The only reason they almost didn't do the show is because they're entitled and spoiled and not very likable, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I, I gotta be, yeah, I'm gonna, I, I gotta be honest, just like... My biggest problem with this movie is I just didn't really like the Spice Girls. I thought they were kind of, <laughs> I thought they were kind of bad people in this. Uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Spice Girls are probably the weak link in the Spice Girls movie. <laughs> um, what did you think? Yeah, no, th- this movie is all over the fucking place, which is maybe why. I had a little trouble remembering it. I have seen it before. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I didn't remember a whole lot about it. There were, like, specific moments I remembered. Actually, there was probably... I, I probably remembered more than I thought I did. But it's just because this movie is so scattershot. Like, too many things are going on in this fucking movie. Yeah. It, it is practically a a sketch comedy with like the spice girls as the center and there's like little things that are ongoing but mostly it's just a series of like loose vignettes that go nowhere yeah 
what I can, I, I forgot to mention the director and the year it came out. I normally will say that January 23rd, 1998 was the U S release of it. At least it says also 1997. So that it may have been released uh, prior to that, just outside of the U S um, but the director was Bob Spears and he is not a movie director. Um, he was a television director and he has yeah. a lot of television work. You know, he has a big, you know, he, big list of work. This movie feels he, like a TV movie. <laughs> yeah, he worked with uh, the comic strip for a while, which is like a British comedy troupe. Um, a lot of the people who did um, the young ones, although Bob Spear, I don't believe, worked on the young ones. But y- you can kind of tell that it's like... It's from, like, a British skit comedy director. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I will give it this. I I laughed at some of the skits. And not, like, it, like yeah. Cool as Ice, where it was like, oh, this is so bad, it's, like, good. I No, I genuinely thought some of them were funny. I thought some of them were annoying. Um, I don't think the Spice Girls are very likable in this. And here's the thing. If the intent is for, like, making them mean-spirited for comedy purposes, you know, like Tenacious D, they, you know, it's, it, that's a, you know, they actually make music, but in the, their movie, they're, they, you know, they're kind of <laughs> dickheads in that movie. They're stupid in that movie. It's funny, you know? Um, in yeah. this movie, it's like they're not going far enough with them, though, to where that seems like the point. I think you're supposed to like them. Then they got their friend that's pregnant, and they're talking about freedom, and they're talking about how, you know, there's more important things than gigs. And it's just like, you know, you these, these people paid for your show, and you just, like, you haven't been shown doing work the entire movie. I don't sympathize with you. Your the your your manager isn't shouting at you for like doing something that you thought was fun. He's yelling at you because you got you like endangered two children's lives, and and it got reported on in the news. And it's like that's a reasonable thing to be upset about. Yeah. Um. With that being said, I think this movie understands its demographic, its tar- target demographic better. I am sure that there are younger girls who watch this movie and got a kick out of it, kind of like someone might get a kick out of like a Disney Channel movie, like the Cheetah Girls or High School Musical. Um, I think it understand. I think it probably is more appealing to its demographic than Cool as Ice is, because Cool as Ice is like it's trying to be cool and it's not. <laughs> and I don't think anyone ever thought it was cool. This movie, I think it's accomplishing some things. And again, like some of the skits um, are kind of funny. So I think it's doing something right. It's not, it's getting a lot wrong, but I think it's getting something right. Well, the thing with Spice World is it just throws so much shit at the wall that some of it ends up sticking. Yeah. Like there are good jokes in this movie. There is stuff that made me laugh in this movie. I especially um, liked the two people trying to get that, like trying to ruin their careers and the photographer they hired that actually did get like several of their, not all of them worked, but several of their scenes did actually get a good laugh out of me. Uh, and they're not the only ones. There's, there's a lot going on in this movie that I think is fairly funny. Almost none of it is stuff the Spice Girls are doing. Yeah. It's almost always when they cut away from the Spice Girls. <laughs> yeah, even the, like, there's some, like, dark fucking jokes in this movie. Like, the, the their manager's, like, saying, okay, you're filming right now. Here's what we're going to do. And then he, like, holds out a fucking noose and I'm going to go onto that stage and I'm going to hang myself right now. And it's just like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Was not expecting this type of uh, humor in the Spice Girls movie. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, we should probably talk about the the cast here. Yeah. Um, because outside of the Spice Girls, uh, you've got some noteworthy names. Alan Cummings is, uh, this, like, documentary filmmaker who's, like, filming the Spice Girls throughout the movie. Uh, the, there's their manager. Who was, what was their manager's name? I don't, he, he wasn't super popular, but, you know, he was, he was there. Uh, But then there's, like, the record executive above him who's, like, giving him instructions. And it's goddamn fucking uh, Roger Moore 
fucking bond. And there's even a joke about, like, not wanting to stir things. And it's like, ah, because he was James Bond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, fucking Meatloaf is their bus driver. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, and he, like, because, like, Elton John and Bob Hoskins, of all people, make cameos in it. But Meat yeah, Meatloaf no. is, like, in a, he appears, like, four or five times. There's also, like, a lot of fucking cameos in this movie. Stephen Fry is the judge in that one flash, like, that one fantasy scene. Yes, S- Stephen Fry shows up briefly. Bob Hoskins shows up briefly. Uh, Elton did, John, like you mentioned. Who did Richard E. Um, Grant play? Elvis Costello. Oh, wait, was he the band's manager? What was he? Maybe. Me. Looking at his Wikipedia. I think that was the the T the the movie director. Huh. Yeah, Hugh Hugh Laurie makes a cameo. Richard O'Brien of uh Rocky Horror fame makes a, a cameo. Yeah. Um George Wint appears in the movie. Uh Norm from Cheers, he's actually fairly prominent character he's one of the guys working on the movie mm-hmm. yeah i mean they uh, uh, you know it, it kind of makes sense that they were able to get these names in the movie it was you know it was spice girls they were popular at the time definitely were able to get more people than vanilla ice was for his movie yeah i mean ellen john's a pretty big one uh i mentioned rock uh, rocket man before and I'm, I'm actually gonna mention it one more time before this episode's over but yeah, I mean, he's only in it for like ten sec, like ten twenty seconds. He he's like in and out. His his scene really does feel like he was on set. Like he just so happened to be around and like, oh, come be in a, like a yeah, quick scene for a movie. A, a lot of them feel like they were shot in maybe like a day, maybe even less. Like even Roger Moore, who's like a pretty prominent character. It feels like they could have shot his stuff in, like, a day or two. I don't even think he's on screen with the Spice Girls ever. Elton John is so brief, like, and it's not even, like, it's kind of an awkward scene. Like, it's kind of awkward acting that if you told me that he was on set for 15 minutes, I would believe you. Yeah. No, I I had to look it up and see if it was actually Elton John or if they just hired an impersonator. (laughs) But it was him. It was actually Elton John. Yeah. Yeah, some crazy cameos in this movie. <laughs> fun stuff. It was kind of fun just to, that, you know, like in a movie like this, sometimes cameos can be really anno- like annoying and excessive. In a movie like this, I kind of welcome it. It's just kind of like something that keeps it from getting boring. Like genuinely caught me off guard seeing fucking Bob Hoskins. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, what the hell? Why is <laughs> why is Bob Hoskins in this movie? Uh, it, it it was not something. It wasn't even something that he needed to be there for. It was like the joke was like, uh, like because it's like another one of the scenes where the director, the two directors are trying to, the two filmmakers are trying to like convince the um their manager to make a movie with the Spice Girls in it, and it says and one of them is like they they're, he's treating them all like they're like superheroes, and one of them is the master of disguise or like spies or whatever, and then she goes into a booth. And cha- and then changes into a disguise, and it's Bob Hoskins for some reason. <laughs> they, it literally could have been any person, and the joke would have made as much sense. <laughs> Maybe they ran into Bob Hoskins on the street while they had the camera equipment and said, "Oh, oh, Bob, Bob." Apparently, like, like a lot of them were like, you know, cashing in on like the, the either they were Spice Girls fans or they knew someone who was a Spice Girls fan. Uh, Stephen Fry did this in exchange for, like, Spice Girl autographs to give to, like, his nieces and nephews. That's nice. Um, apparently Gary Oldman was going to be in the movie, but scheduling conflicts wouldn't allow it. But he he wanted to be in the movie because his kids liked Spice Girls. (laughs) I I do think it's funny that, like, a big thing they... Because... Uh, uh, you have this reporter who, or this photographer who's trying to, like, catch tabloid cover stories about the Spice Girls, and they joke about, like, the Spice Girls breaking up, and, you know, the Spice Girls did break up, so. (laughs) (laughs) They did a 
reunion tour pretty recently. Okay. The um the photographer character was just kind of perfect for that role because I swear just his presence on the screen normally got a laugh out of me. He looked the part. They were trying like just have this like I, I thought uh, genuinely I thought there were some funny jokes there like when they're first talking about how to hire him and he says well how how good is he and then he shows him pictures like he shows him pictures of the, like the boss to him saying like this is what he was able to get and some of them are from when he was 12 <laughs> like that's a good joke that's actually kind of funny yeah but then like just like his acting in the movie is funny like his movement was funny um he's you know like there's literally a scene where they're in an apartment and his head sticks out of the toilet like he's just there and it's just like <laughs> uh yeah. one thing we we sort of set it up here's the payoff spice world is really difficult to find yeah uh i have a vhs of it and it's probably one of my more valuable VHSs because that's a really difficult movie to get a hold of. I looked it up on Amazon and it, it, like the DVD is long out of print. So the DVD was going for like 60 bucks on Amazon. And I'm like, I am not paying $60 for fucking Spice World. So a little difficult to get your hands on this movie. It's not like for rent anywhere. Uh, the, the DVD's out of print, no Blu-ray. I wonder if that's maybe a music rights issue. Because, first off, I don't know how good a term the Spice Girls are on right now. They mm -hmm. did do a, a reunion tour fairly recently, but that that doesn't always mean they're on good terms. So there might be, like, a few of them holding out. And even if they aren't, it's always possible that, like, some record executive who had nothing to do with it has the rights and isn't going to give them up cheap. And they're like, yeah, it's not worth it for the Spice Girls movie. It's not worth it for Spice World. It can be really... There's like a lot of cases where music just makes something impossible to release. Or at least impossible to release properly. Um, yeah, I mean... There's, a, there's uh, a ton of tangents I can go on there that I'm not because I've already gone off topic too many times. Yeah, I mean, uh, ju just as an example, uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall very difficult to find it is oh my god i got it on dvd and i'm happy about that but it's like i i do too it's not it's not as hard to find as spice world probably because it's a much popular move much more popular movie than spice world but you can't like rent it on youtube or amazon or actually uh, uh the guy who plays pink in the wall makes a cameo in spice world <laughs> well uh, anything else to talk about with Spice World? Yeah, I do actually. Nothing too crazy, but um, it's mainly just from a technical perspective. It's not like shot that way. I think that Cool as Ice has probably, if you have to take the best shot from Cool as Ice and the best shot from this, Cool as Ice has the best shot. Because this does feel like TV show quality cinematography, but mm. it's not bad TV show quality. Like, it's, like, it feels typical to anything else you would see on television in the 90s, so it's not, like, stand out bad. Most of it feels perfectly acceptable for what it is. There is some really bad transitions that look like they were done in Windows Movie Maker, and I, I understand this is the 90s. I understand this is before Movie Maker was a thing, probably. I don't know how old that program is. I know it is, like, an early 2000s program. But there is, like, a weird thing they do whenever it cuts to flashbacks where they stretch the screen out and it just looks horrible. And I don't know why they did that. All you have to do is change the color gradient, gradient for a flashback. And they do that, too. So I don't know why they they stretch the screen out. That doesn't look good. Yeah. Um. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like oh, this is just the camera they were filming with. It looks like in post-production they stretched the screen out in a weird way. Um. And it looked horrible. Um, kind of a nitpick because it doesn't really matter that much, but what I don't think is a big nitpick, and I'm tired of this in biopic movies or just movies about bands, is like, man, it's not fun to just film shots of a peep of people singing in a line. That's not interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's no, not. They, they didn't have very creative ways of integrating most of the songs. The only one I think they did a good job with was "Wannabe," their their most popular song. Yeah, that one, and that one, I, I I would agree that one was better because they're not, like, you know, they're in a bar at a coffee shop, I mean, they're not, like, at yeah. a... 
it's it's like a flashback to before they were famous and they're like whoa here's our song and it's like oh hey that's the one song i know them for but yeah all of their other performances in the movie which honestly there is kind of just like cool as ice there is a lack of granted throughout the movie they still play a lot of their music I think they do that more uh, than Cool as Ice. Yeah, this is much better about playing Spice Ghost music than Cool as Ice yeah. was about Vanilla Ice music. Pretty frequently there's music being played. I'd say you see them perform like four times. Maybe five, four or five. Which is, again, better than Cool as Ice. Cool as Ice only did it three times. They're both pretty equal in length, too. So I think Cool as Ice is a little longer. But yeah, the it's just really boring way to shoot it. And I, that's why I said I'd bring up rocket man one more time. There's, you can make it work. You can find a creative way to do it. And I know that I'm comparing a modern movie to something in the nineties that looks like a TV movie, but I just, it's such a, I, I hate that. I see that in a lot of movies, fucking Bohemian Rhapsody did it too, where like the scenes where the characters have to sing, they're just doing nothing creative with it at all. What's the point of making a movie? Just film a fucking concert at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. You know, we you mentioned Pink Floyd, The Wall. That is a fucking fantastic version of that. Like that, that's that's actually probably what I should be bringing up. Although that's again, I would, that's like an art piece, not a celebrity biopic or fun little skit comedy movie. Yeah, I I, I think the thing I would probably compare this to is like one of the Beatles' old movies, like A Hard Day's Night. Um, I haven't seen those. Which. Uh, Yellow Submarine does a really good job integrating the Beatles music. Hard Day's Night, uh, it, it, there's probably one or two sequences that are just them recording music, but there's also, like, music over them doing other things. Frankly, I'm surprised none of the Beatles made a cameo in this movie. <laughs> I was kind of expecting it. Like, Ringo or Paul could be in this movie, and I'd be like, yep, yeah. that checks out. Although... Apparently, they had references to uh, Princess Di and uh, Versace, and then they both died before the movie came out, and they're like, whoops, cutting those references. You know, you know what else I thought was weird? I know I'm kind of going back to the cinematography. You know what else I thought was weird? There's a scene where they're showing the concert that they did with, like, you know, the buff men dancing behind in the purple outfits. Uh... And you see camera operators in the scene, like, moving around with the cameras and getting all these different angles. And I'm not sure if it would have been good angles, but, I mean, why? yeah, you're showing people get more interest in shots than you're getting. Because they're moving around with the camera, they're doing something with it. And it's like, why, are, why aren't you showing what their cameras are showing, then? Was this just a real concert that they were filming for this scene? What was that about? Why are, like, because yeah. they had, like, a line of cameramen that were just in the shot, and it's like, is this a real event that you filmed and added to the movie? Or uh, was that just I, an aesthetic choice? Like, that just, like, oh, I, this that, something I like think that was supposed to be them, like, filming a music video. Mm -hmm. That was weird. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, you ready to move on to voting? I'm ready to move on to voting. All right. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not even a question for me. It's fucking Spice World. I agree. Yep. Okay. Spice World. <laughs> Definitely. Like, cause there are things that work in this movie. There are moments that I laughed at that are supposed to be jokes, right? If I'm laughing at Cool as Ice, I'm laughing at Cool as Ice because of how lame it is. Um, I, I... I always like, yeah, I always like to check the comments on the rank rankings right after we reveal it, just because I, I don't read them beforehand, because I kind of like the surprise. Um, Spice World obviously already won, but voters also pick Spice World, as I'm seeing now. And I like this one comment from Carl Wickers, uh, Wilkerson, which says, I'm leaning towards Spice over Ice. Rationale, the Spice Girls promised nothing, and they delivered. Vanilla Ice promised nothing, and he delivered less. <laughs> yeah uh, and i think that's a true statement <laughs> no what i what i was when we were watching cool because we watched cool as ice first i'm like man i forgot how much of a douchebag vanilla ice in it is in this movie <laughs> so i was already leaning uh spice world over cool as ice before we had even watched spice world 
<laughs> uh, but when we watched Spice World and there were moments I was actually genuinely laughing at, I'm like, no, nope, yeah, it's Spice World. So I just want the record to show uh, uh, they wanted Cool as Ice to compete with Boys in the Hood. And here we are saying the Spice Girls movie was better. <laughs> so. so with that being said... Um, I do think Cool as Ice is funnier. I will watch Cool as Ice. I'd be okay with watching Cool as Ice again one day. I don't ever want to watch Spice World again. I didn't actually say this during that portion, but the last 30 minutes really fucking dragged on for me. Um, cause I feel like they're at like the last act of the movie. They're kind of done with skit comedy. There's a little bit of it, but it's mainly just like, Oh no, are they going to break up? Oh, they got to make it to the concert on time. And it's like, at least before it was ADHD friendly, where it was constantly cutting back and forth to different shit. We're on the same shit for a while at the end, and it really fucking slowed down. Yeah, Cool as Ice might be a little more rewatchable, but I think Spice World is undeniably the better movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's, it's just, I feel like it's a product that some people actually could, like, unironically enjoy. Cool as Ice, if someone actually told me that they sincerely enjoyed it, Cool as ice. I I think I don't think I'd believe them. <laughs> I don't I don't think I'd believe it. It's just like I have such a hard I would have such a hard time accepting that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Spice World wins. Woo! Uh, because the the poll seventy three percent in favor of Spice World with forty eight votes. So it's it's pretty unanimous on this one. Yeah. Um. They, these were just two movies I wanted to talk about, and I'm like, eh, they're both 90s pop acts. We can put these two together. Yeah. I, I wish there were better pair-ups for them. Like, I wish there was, like, an MC Hammer movie we could compare to Cool as Ice, but whatever. I can, I can live with this pair-up, even though I think Spice World has the pretty clear edge. Yeah, it, the parrot the parrot made sense to me because honestly, to me, like they're both like not very good movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, and they're both like yeah, like same same thing in mind. Nineties acts that are has beens and um, I would say people probably remember Spice Girls a lot more fondly than than I. So it works that way too. All right, they 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 are a running joke on the boys. So they, they to this day they're remembered. Uh, so next time, you already know what we're doing next time. This is gonna be a fun yeah. one. This People are gonna be upset no matter what we say in the next episode. <laughs> this is, we, we, we gotta rip the band-aid off with this one, though. Uh, like, this, this is just, it's, it's gonna hurt, but we gotta do it. Um, it's a, a beloved director coming back years later, to ruin his two biggest franchises. It's Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace versus Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And, just so we can keep things fair and balanced, we will be having a guest next episode, our dear friend Olivia, of, uh, of Smash Pack fame. Yeah, should we, uh... If you don't, if if the answer to this is no, don't um include this in the episode. Should we mention that uh, what Olivia said about this movie on Couch Co-op? Because uh, I mean, it's already out there. Like people can watch yeah. the episode. Olivia is a fan of episode one, which is so, kind of why we're bringing her on. It's interesting, in my opinion. I don't remember episode one at fucking all. I definitely saw it when I was a kid, and I don't. Yeah. Indiana Jones, I have no connection to, and I, I'm, I, here, here's the thing: I'm dreading this one a little bit because I don't remember Indiana Jones. I may have seen it as a kid. I'm gonna watch all three of the movies and then watch the fourth one for Hall of Victories. I'm pretty sure I saw the first one as a kid, but it's been a long time. Star Wars, man, I'm not a fan of Star Wars. I don't I, like the original three That's... movies. They're fine. The sequel trilogy, I thought the first two were fine. I'm not big. On, I should probably be saving this for next episode, but just as like a disclaimer. <laughs> I well, didn't watch the Rise of Skywalker. I I the reason I think Olivia is a good guest to have is because I hate episode 1 and you don't care about Star Wars. So <laughs> to have someone on the other end who likes episode 1, 
I, I think is going to make this a, a more balanced episode. Yeah. So I... We got good, evil, and neutral. Yeah. I, I look forward to having Olivia on. Yeah. Uh, and who knows? I might hate episode one. I might hate it more than anything we've watched on the show so far. It's all possible. Uh, maybe I'll feel that way about Indiana Jones. <laughs> hmm. I, I sort of doubt you'll hate phantom menace more than last airbender yeah last airbender is still i i, I do i i have been keeping a track of like my rankings as i mentioned before last air this is like we've covered 14 movies on the show so far last airbender is like still dead last <laughs> it's gonna take a special movie to beat that uh, uh well we got some prepared for this new year but uh, uh anything else to say Oh, not really. <laughs> All right. Uh, until next time, for my co-host, Movie Mackle, I'm Matt Presents. Have a nice day. Peace.